Shoo, shoo, shoo. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? See, there's no excuse for you not pushing yourself to the next level. In order for you to create a new you, you must have a new mindset. When teams come together, we can create things that are greater than the sum of all of their parts. Good morning and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to seven, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? Dude, today is Wednesday, I believe Thursday. Yes, today is Thursday, December 3rd, 2020. That's right, crazy, man. Thursday, December 3rd, 2020. And what's crazy is today is the very first and the very last time it'll ever be Thursday, December 3rd, 2020. So I wanna make sure we make the absolute most. My hair is a mess. Make an absolute most of this absolutely beautiful, beautiful day. I got to tell you, man, my poor wife got introduced. I didn't realize how crazy you and I were, right? Like sometimes you don't realize how crazy you actually are. But I did realize this morning, for some reason, my daughter was up. My uh, youngest daughter was up super early. She got up when I got up, which was at 3.20 this morning. She was not able to go back to bed. So when I came upstairs after doing my, you know, my gratitude, my goals, writing out my show, doing all of those things, I come back upstairs. It's 4.20 in the morning and my wife is sitting there with the baby and they're like up. And I mean, you would have thought I'd seen an alien. Like I am not used to seeing a human being that early in the morning, right? And it was crazy, but my poor wife, she couldn't get back to sleep. She's getting close to having this baby here soon. We got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of planter orders that are going out. And so she's packaging planter orders. Her brain is like in nesting mode, the poor thing. But it just reminded me how crazy it is that we get together so early in the morning. What a way to start the day, man. I am so thankful for all of you. There's already almost 200 people that are watching live here this morning on hashtag rise and grind it's absolutely amazing but it is crazy right hey for those of you that don't know i am glenn lundy the host of hashtag rise and grind i'm also the creator of the hashtag rise and grind group which is a group on facebook i would love for you to join us if you're not already in the group just search for hashtag rise and grind you should be able to find us we're over 30,000 members strong and this is a place where you're going to find nothing but motivation, education, and inspiration. You won't find anything else in there, I promise. My moderators make sure that it's so. So we'd love to have you. If you're listening on the podcast, welcome. Come join our group on Facebook. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, glad you're here. Drop a comment, connect with me, hit a like, hit a smile, any of those things so that I know you're there because that's what it's all about. It's all about me and you connecting, not me just sitting here talking every day for 30 minutes. It's about those relationships. Listen, this week we've been an incredible in, in this week we've been in an in an incredible. That's a hard thing to say together, right? In an incredible, right? This week we've been in an incredible series 
about African culture. We've been learning all about African culture. We learned about this incredible word, Ubuntu, which means I am because you are, and ultimately talks about our responsibility and ability to lift each other up in greatness, right? As one, as a unified team. We've been traveling all through Africa, taking a look at its beautiful landscapes and its beautiful people. We've been learning some proverbs that come from Africa, like this one here, the the sky is wide enough for the birds to fly without collision, which is basically saying, hey, the world's a big place. We don't need to collide or have any division. We've learned a little bit about their spirituality, the religious beliefs, and how they tap into source as far as that goes. And so we've had a fun week, man, just really exploring African culture. And see, today we're going to mix it up just a little bit. Just a little bit, because I believe in order to connect with and get to know people, it really starts with the roots, right? It really starts with their heritage. And that's what we've done this week is gone into the heritage of African people. We've gone to the root, but see, African culture is the root of African American culture. And that's what I want to dive into Today, I want to dive into some African American culture, a little bit more modern. How does these things that we've learning, how do they play into who Africans are today in America, right? The country that we live in and how these traditions and the roots and the places that they've come from over hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years, literally ancestrally, how they apply and affect who we are today. So that's what we're going to dive into today, some African American culture. It's going to be super fun. Uh, it's also going to be super informative. And there may be some stuff in here that maybe you don't want to see or maybe you don't want to talk about. But I am here because you and I have a relationship where we motivate, educate, and inspire. That's what this show is all about. Motivation, education, inspiration. And that's what you're going to get today is you're going to get a little bit of all of that. Some motivation, some education, and some inspiration. Before we dive in, though... You know what we got to do? We got to dance, right? We got to dance. And since we're, we've are we been in some African culture, we're going to listen to some African music today. How about that? That's right. We got to get the body moving. Such an incredible part of your morning, right? Get the body moving. Get the blood flowing. Get the heart pumping. If you're out there working out right now, what's up, Carter Myers? Great to see you. If you're out there working out right now, just put a little extra pep in that step. All right? If you're, if you're somewhere where, where everyone's looking at you, just dance anyway. Dance with your headphones on. I don't care. Bring up that energy level. You know what I'm saying? For those of you that know, those of you that don't know, this is the part of the show where I need you to hit that share button. Come on. There's 235 of y'all up in here. Imagine if everybody hit the share button, what that would do to change people's day to day. Right? We live in an incredible time, an incredible season where people need motivation, education, and inspiration more than ever. And you can contribute to that by pushing that share button. Hit it. Hit it right now. Hit that share button. Also, hit a like, hit a smile, hit a heart, do whatever. Let me know that you're here. Let's check in. This is also the part of the show where I'm going to say good morning to you, Sean Jones. And you're going to say good morning to me. What's up, Spencer Tarasi? How you doing, young Darius Johnson? What's up, Martin Haggard? Great to see you again. What's up, John Gayheimer? We got Michelle Gravely's up in here this morning. Jeff Baker, Tracy Shepard's in the house, Emily Gowler, Kim Fair, Marilyn Wilkins, John Coltonborn, Gail B. Craft, Karen Simpson, Jean Paul Didry. What's up, Ray Hatcher? If you're new here, you gotta drop a comment. There's 253 people on live right now. If you are new here, drop a comment. I wanna say good morning to you. What's up, Janelle Griego? We've got Tabitha in the house. How you doing, Alita? Janet Dyer's up in here. Tabby Nigrit, Christine Baird, Eddie Brown, Judy Anderson is in the house. What's up, Bruce Miller out there in New Orleans? What's up, Michael Guthrie? Tabitha Wells is in the house. Vicki Everett, James Gavin, Melvin Rodriguez, Sherry, Denise, Shaquette. What's up, Kim Wilson? We've got Mike Overfelt in the house. Jeremy Nolan's up in here. Suzanne Wall. This place is packed. Packed house. Linda Labonts is up in the house this morning. Love it. Julio Soto, Eddie Brown, everybody's up in here on Hashtag Rise and Grind. Let's dive in. It's going to be a super fun series. Before we do, though, in case you didn't know, the new 2021 planners are out. I need you to go get your one.
What's up, y'all? I am back. Let's talk about ways that we can give back to our community. Why am I talking about this? Well, this week we're talking about African traditions and ways that people celebrate Christmas in Africa. Again, I checked out these ladies' awesome YouTube channel who give so much history and knowledge around African culture, and their goal is to represent Africa positively through their platform. And I learned so much about Christmas time in Africa, and the main takeaway that I had was that in this culture, Christmas is not just celebrated with your own personal tight-knit family and friends, but it's celebrated as a community. And there's even community gifts that are given. Everyone celebrates together. And I thought that we could learn from that, pull something from it, and figure out ways that this year, even if it's one idea, ways that we could get involved in our community and bless our community, especially during such a difficult year. I'm giving you 12 different ways. Last time we shared six and I have six more for you today. This one any of us can do. It'll only take a second. Compliment a parent about how well their child is doing. Sometimes parents get so overwhelmed and feel like they're doing a terrible job. I know I've felt that way before. How about you? Hearing a nice compliment from someone that says, hey, I think you're doing a great job. I really appreciate your child. Maybe they're so well behaved or, and you should be so proud of them. You're doing a great job, mom. You're doing a great job, dad. Such a small thing that can make such a big difference. Here's a really unique idea, kind of different. Get first aid certified. Learn CPR. Now, why would you do that? How's that gonna bless your community? You never know when you're gonna be out at Aldi's and somebody be choking and you'd be helping them and you got your first aid certification you be blessed in the community that way. All jokes aside, this is such a responsible and kind thing to do that if you have not, even if you don't have to, go ahead and take a day, learn this certification. You never know whose life you're gonna save. Here's a fun one. Have you ever been to a laundromat? I know I have. I know I've spent a lot of time in the laundromat when I was younger. My mom didn't have a washer and dryer. I spent hours there. There's so many people who are at the laundromat during this holiday season. Maybe their washer and dryer went out. Maybe they don't have one. What if we left care packages for them? You could leave quarters. You could leave laundry detergent. You could leave some snacks, whatever it may be, a kind note. Can you imagine being by yourself, spending hours there and getting that from a stranger? You can't afford something like that. You can even just leave a couple of quarters. Take baked goods to a fire department or a police station. Again, you might need to call ahead of time and say, listen, I got the you know what's but I wanna bring some snacks up there. Call ahead and see, that would be so appreciated and I know bless them. Along with the laundry mat gift packages, also to emergency rooms. Isn't that a unique idea? I saw that online. You can put together care packages and leave for those who are waiting in the waiting room during this holiday season. What a cool idea, huh? And lastly, we're gonna get a little old school here, shovel somebody's drive. I know you had to be doing that as a kid, but we can still do it as a grown up. Or better yet, you can send your children and tell them to go outside and bless somebody. You know what I'm saying? That'd be blessing you, that'd be blessing the neighbors and get the children, get some energy out. You're welcome. I hope these ideas inspired you. Do one of them, it only takes a second. We can learn from the African tradition to use Christmas as an opportunity to not only love and be with friends and family, but also extend ourselves out into our communities because we are all in this together. Heather Parody is an amazing human being and she's captured this idea of Ubuntu. Ubuntu, right? I am because you are, we are all one. It's a oneness. We're connected. You win, I win. You rise, I rise. It's how it works, right? And see, the African culture gets this totally one million percent. This is, is what they built their, their traditions on, is this idea of Ubuntu, right? So I love that. I love Heather's ideas. And I appreciate Heather Parody so very much. I hope that you guys do as well. Blow her up today and just tell her that you love her. Listen, in the 1600s, African Americans were introduced to America as slaves. They were brought over to America by the British that were ultimately seeking asylum from a country that was filled with tyranny and violence so in order to support their move in order to be to support their coming to a, a new country they violently 
kidnapped African-American men, women, and children from their homes in Africa, removed them from their land, tricked them, and conned them into ultimately unimaginable circumstances. There's just no way around it. There's no way to softly talk about this. It's the reality. And so as slaves, they spent an average of 12 to 14 hours a day working the fields and helping establish the homes for their owners. They were doing these things for meager rations and barely livable and in, in, in under barely livable conditions. Now, during this period of time, song ultimately became like a beacon of hope. And that's why for the slaves to invoke their tribal spirit and really rally the communities to pull together as one, they invoked Ubuntu and they did that through song. The sounds were incredibly beautiful as they came together using their voices Waiting to encourage and to lift up. Now, obviously, these were trying times, but just as their traditional African culture had taught them to do, music was deeply seated in everything and every move that they made. From the early days of rituals and gatherings and the celebrations of African people, and all the way through to this time of slavery in our country and all the way still to this day. Mm. Doesn't that sound beautiful? Mm. Now what's awful is many African Americans still live in very similar situations. Meager means, meager rations, barely livable conditions, long days of work for little pay. And you see music is seen as both of a way to pull people together as well as a way to pull out and release the chains of poverty. Now you've seen many African Americans going all the way back to Miles Davis, Ella Fitzgerald, The Temptations, The Isley Brothers, Bob Marley, Janet and Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Louis Armstrong, Jimi Hendrix, B.B. King, Nat King Cole, Mariah Carey, Marvin Gaye, Diana Ross, moving forward into the Notorious B.I.G., Dr. Dre, Tupac, Snoop, the list goes on and on. You see, music is the root of African-American culture for many reasons. It is the sounds that stirs the spirits, that invokes the ancestors, that rallies and creates this Ubuntu. It is a path out and it is a path up. What's truly fascinating to me, truly fascinating, is that all of the, it's not just a lot of the music influences that the African American culture has had on, on America, but also all of the marvels, like the marvels of agriculture. You see, as these African Americans were forced to uh, work the farms and work the land and, and manage the, the animals and all of those things. There was an agricultural agricultural experience and learning that was happening that not only were they learning how to work our land more effectively and more efficiently, the land we live in now, but they were also bringing in all of the traditions and the ways that they had done things over in Africa. Like ultimately, there was a guy named uh, Henry Blair. 
And so Henry Blair actually helped introduce this idea of, of how we could grow rice here in, uh, right, how we could grow rice here in America, right? And, and how we could use groundwater and springs to create these soil moisture re uh, reservations, basically, in order to grow it. And he invented things like the, the corn plant, planter and the cotton planter. Like he brought all of these things to light, which transformed agriculture going forward. There's also a guy named George Washington Carver. And George Washington Carver, he, he created a crop rotation system that taught our farmers how if we plant the corn and then we replace it with peanuts, we could actually fertilize the land in such an incredible way. That ultimately we could get fruit year round. He was also the creator and, and the engineer between compost and how we can use compost as fertilizer to help us grow future crops. I mean, there's so many different agricultural inventions that came from the black community. So they took this bad, bad, bad situation of slavery and ultimately were able to use it to transform the world. Fascinating. To me, it's just absolutely fascinating. So on top of the musical influences of the African American culture that is at their core, literally at their core, spiritually and ancestrally, on top of that, we have the agricultural impacts from hard working, working hard with their hands over hundreds and thousands of years to cultivate the ground and what that's done for us here in America today. But on top of those the fashion and style that has come from the African culture, the color that has been injected into the United States of America is, is off the chain. You see, fashion and color is traditionally a huge part of African American culture and even African culture behind that. You see, we've been adding vibrant colors and whimsical designs to an otherwise you know let's just say it it was kind of a mundane black and white boring way of life <laughs> you see all the seeds that were planted in the traditions of the of the colors of the african cultures that were brought over here and have been that have evolved over time have created this colorful world that we live in. It's so incredibly impactful. And so fashion and style is really important in the African American culture. It's a way to separate yourself. It's a way to show your uniqueness and your, your, the royalty that exists in your veins. It's a way to exude your uniqueness in such a powerful way. It's beautiful. And will continue to be beautiful for all years to come. You see, I find it really fascinating and interesting as we've been going down this road, as we've been traveling down this journey all week of understanding African culture. I've learned so much myself. There were so many things that I didn't really know or understand that I just, my eyes have been opened like, I get it now, right? I get it. Because see, ultimately, who we are today, the decisions that we make, the way that we walk and the way that we talk, it was all built and designed over hundreds and thousands of years of tradition that culminates to where we are now. Now, within that, seemingly, we have allowed these uniquenesses, these differences in our roots to cause division. But the more I look at it, the more I see the unity that is created by it. It is so beautiful. Next week, we're going to travel over to Asia. We're going to learn more about Asian cultures, and we'll bring that back to Asian American cultures as well. The following week, I think we're going to, uh, to, to India and then Tibet, right? And we're going we're gonna to learn all these different things. But ultimately, the message this month and the message I want you to take away with today is there is so much beauty in the blended, my friends. There is so much beauty in the blended. 
Get around people that don't look like you. Get around people that believe things that are different than you. Get around people that will disagree with you. And get around them in a way of Ubuntu, where we are all one, and together we can help each other rise. Listen, my friends, I want you to have a beautiful day today. And if you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. Head on over there if you need some more videos. Um, have an amazing day, an over-the-top incredible day. Know that you and I are children of God, the God of the universe. It's not you black, you green, you brown, you white. No, no, no. That, that's, just, that's just the beauty expressing itself through humanity. What we all are, our brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters in Christ, the God of the universe. And so I love you. I hope you know that as my brother and as my sister and the decisions that you're making, every single one of them, a decision to go out and connect with someone that's different than you, a decision to love someone that doesn't believe what you believe, a decision to unite with those that can add value to your life. All of those decisions, they matter. It makes a massive impact on this planet. You matter. So go out there and have an incredible day. I'll see you again tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. We're going to do this all over again on hashtag rise and grind. Woo! That sultry voice, boy, killing me. Stay woke, stay woke, stay woke, stay woke. Hashtag rising grind, hashtag rising grind. First thing on my mind.